Swazdula, you lollipops, how the hell are you? So then, Devstream 159 has concluded. As per usual, the Devstream was kind of, um... Let's just say it was about 10 minutes worth of valuable information and the rest of it was pretty much just devil babble and time fodder. But that's been kind of the case for the last one and a half years roughly with the dev streams. And that's okay. It's it's whatever. But uh, the contents that were kind of juicy, I'm going to quickly go over those right fast and add some of my two cents to these things. Overall, what we've heard, what is going to be new and kind of juicy is pretty good. Call of Duty uh, game modes or game styles have been confirmed so everything that you played during the new war such as the Grenier gameplay the Vaso gameplay and Teshin gameplay those things in some way shape or form are going to be introduced to the game ETA unknown uh, drifter uh, gameplay drifter mechanics also confirmed um, if I understand you correctly it looks like they're going to try to make uh, the operators a little bit more such as the drifter where you can use your own kind of unique weapons they mentioned something about what you have equipped which is for me really good news i would really love to get away from these emo children with their stupid amps that do nothing um and just get into maybe some kind of limited range of weapons that they can use or some specific ones maybe some shared weapons with the warframes like the nataruk right now is well it started off with the drifter weapon and now the warframes have it so i don't know how that's going to end up later but in any case it is confirmed that de is going to actually be putting that into the game which is good because it's going to add more diversity and more options which brings me to something actually important about that and something else that they mentioned which are two new game modes that are going to be released fairly soon um when it comes to these kinds of game modes call of duty or drifter style or whatever the other two game modes are going to be because they are also coming the two game modes the new ones they're also coming with a new warframe is i totally appreciate and understand that there are some people out there that are like yes i really want to see that i love those kinds of game modes and game styles and then there's another group of people that say no i hate it please ban that from the game uh, for any future updates and um, that's kind of wrong and, and it kind of depends on how DE implements that. When DE puts in any kind of game mode or gameplay it needs to be optional for the players. As long as it's optional it won't hurt anybody. The players who don't want to play it and aren't interested in it they don't need to touch it and the ones that are interested in it they have the option to jump on it immediately like for example with steel path you really don't need to do steel path ever but you're if you're in the mood for it and you have it unlocked then you can Eidolon hunting would be a counter argument. For Eidolons, you have to do Eidolons if you want to have access to some of the more basic and very commonly used arcanes. If you don't care about those, well then you don't have to do it. But if you do, uh, when you don't want to miss out, well you have to do Eidolons. Or, you know, wait potentially years for things such as Scarlet Spear to come back to the game. And that's just not a very good game design. And it pisses off more players than anything I would say so any kind of game modes that they put in there like let's say Call of Duty style game modes it needs to be optional there needs to be of course some kind of a reward that you get for it but it cannot be set up in such a way for example they introduce a new Warframe and the only way to get that new Warframe is if you force the players to play Call of Duty that is not good game design and DE has been doing that very very commonly over the past several years and I really hope that they don't uh, implement it again in future updates. They probably will though, I'm sorry to say, but that's that's just kind of how it is. The third thing that is really nice that they mentioned is um, liches and bitches are getting quality of life changes. The quality of life change is they're implementing a um, elimination system, something that I suggested they should probably do with relics to begin with, um, but that's okay. Um, so at the moment, if you want to have a particular Kuva weapon, you have to go to a Grenier tile set like Cassini, for example, spam that tile um, until you have your Larveling, uh, kill the Larveling, and repeat until the Larveling indicates the weapon that you actually want, let's say the Kuva Tankor. And you can potentially do 50 or even 100 runs and not get the Kuva Tankor, but everything else. So the elimination system that they're going to introduce to both the Liches and the Sisters is that when the Larveling drops something that you do not want, you can reject it, which removes it from the drop pool of your current Lich hunting session. Which is good, uh, because 
worst case scenario, let's say there are, what, 12 Kuva weapons at the moment, something like that, right? The worst case scenario, you'll have to reject 11, and then you'll get the guaranteed one that you want. That's the worst case scenario. So overall, that is really going to reduce the grind, which is really good, because the Lich grind can get very tedious very quickly, and I don't understand why it has the layers that it has. First, RNG, to even get the right Larveling that you want, and then you start to actually put in the work and go and kill and agitate your, your Lich. I don't know, it's a little, it's too many extra steps for no real reason. Um, of course, this change is amazing. It's a really good change. I welcome that wholeheartedly. But at the same time, I take it with a little pinch of salt because I'm like, why wasn't this a thing from the very beginning? But on the other hand, we also have to remember in Digital Extremes, Mind Grind is content and Grind is their favorite method of uh, creating artificial player retention. So it makes sense that they put a unnecessarily grindy grind into the game and then wait a year or two before they actually fix it and basically nerf the RNG aspect of it a little because after that amount of time it will have already served its purpose of keeping players trapped in the game for a little bit longer. I know that sounds mean and maybe you don't agree, maybe you do. Uh, regardless of that, I don't mean it in a hateful way. It's just an observation based off of uh, game design uh, and frequent updates and frequent practice of what they've been doing. And it is what it is, okay? I didn't make this up. So, as I mentioned, there are two new game modes going to be introduced to the game. We don't know what those game modes are going to be exactly, um, but there is also going to be a test cluster very, very, very soon, very soon before the next update, uh, which is Angels of Zeramon, I think is, is, is the title for it, or Echoes of Zeramon, something like that. That's going to be released on February 9th, uh, so very, very soon. Um, and that's really cool. I'm looking forward to what they're going to have. Apparently and evidently it is going to be something about the Zeramon ship that we experienced during uh, the new war. And I mean that only makes sense that that ship would become more relevant in the future. A, it is a core uh, Warframe lore item and secondly building all of that just for the new war like ac actually coding and, and creating and sculpting that entire level just to have it present in the new war for a couple of minutes that's that no that's ridiculous of course they're going to use it and rightfully so that place was dope it was beautiful i really like that and anything that we can do to explore more of that is going to be great so that is going to happen February 9th as well, if I remember correctly. Um, there's going to be the main line that happens February 9th as well. Uh, so a bunch of fixes and all the stuff that they usually do with main lines and whatnot. And like I mentioned, the liches and the sisters uh, quality of life changes are going to happen. Oh, and the new war is going to be replayable, which is also nice. I'm glad that they made that uh, happen as quickly as possible right after the new war. That's really good. I'm liking this pacing. A month ago, we played the new war, and in a couple of days, we're going to be playing the new piece of story, which is... I'm not mad at that, man. That's, that's A-OK -okay in my book. Cross save was also mentioned. I know everybody is kind of waiting for cross play and cross save. We still don't know when that is going to be implemented into the game. All we do know is that it is coming this year. Now, Digital Extremes said that it is their priority to make that happen, which I find conflicts with something that they said in December, which was uh, that their priority is going to be to implement the rest of the new war and this brings me to my final words kind of about the whole dev stream and the information that we had there so first of all cross play and cross save i know a lot of people are very excited about that and that's a good thing it is definitely a great change um it should have been a thing in the game a long time ago but i mean i guess better late than never but I'm sorry to remind you guys, but cross-play and cross-save is not suddenly going to make Warframe a better game. The only thing that that is going to change, of course, if we assume that that is the only thing that is implemented into the game along with it, or soon after or soon before, then the only thing that cross-play and cross-save is going to bring is about a week worth of excitement that uh, players from different platforms that couldn't play together before now can, but ultimately we're just going to be bored and doing repetitive, tedious chores together now across all platforms. I'm sorry to remind you of that, but that's just a fact. 
And I don't say that to bash DE. I say that to make it very clear that cross-play and cross-save, as great as it is, it needs more uh, to make the game actually good because the game substance itself is kind of lacking after all this time. I know they're working hard. I know they're trying to do something. I know there's been a lot of controversial uh, decisions in the past and all that stuff, sure, but that doesn't mean that we can disregard the state of Warframe. And the state of Warframe is not necessarily all that amazing. Again, something that some of you might agree with, some of you might not. Regardless of your personal uh, emotional attachment to it, that's just a fact. And to get back to the, t to the point of uh, priorities, um, DE said that the priority after the new war would be to add the rest of the new war. You know that strange feeling that we all kind of had after completing the new war where we were kind of standing in our orbiter like, so... Where's this new war at? Where Where's the war? Was that it? That feeling of something is missing? Well, that something should have been put into the game very soon after, like I mentioned in my Honest Opinions video about the new war quest. And that doesn't look like it's happening. Not really. Unless, of course, I misunderstood. But from the way I understand it, the next piece of content that we're going to get is going to be the Echoes or Angels of Zeramon, which is going to be a kind of like a filler episode of the Warframe lore regarding the Zeramon ship, which is good because that's super interesting for sure. But that's the next thing happening after the new war quest, while the new war quest still just kind of sits there with no no indication of any war ever having taken place and that feels weird now to be fair it's possible that this echoes of zeramon is just a piece of content that they just happen to have ready to go now so they might as well ship it now sure and if that is the case then okay sure of course great we're happy for every bit of story again i do really love the pacing the fact that it's coming in uh, so soon after or that anything is coming in so soon after the new war is really good it would be kind of cool if we could keep this sort of pacing like every month or two we'd have some cinematic short quests or something like that um might be reaching a little bit far but that's that's okay if that were possible then great and if not well oh well i guess it'd just go back to same old same old but in any case it irks me a little tiny bit to see that we're getting something but we're not getting anything new war related <laughs> so it's it's whatever man so overall is pretty pretty good news call of duty confirmed drifter confirmed liches and sisters getting quality of life changes uh february 9th two new game modes coming at some point and one whole new warframe and the eta for cross play and cross save is to be determined but it is to be implemented this year all that pretty pretty decent pretty decent information i'd say let me know your thoughts uh, down below what did you guys think what do you think the new game modes are going to be or what do you think the new game modes should be cuz i think it's not going to be drifter or call of duty because they mentioned both of those things separately during the dev stream and if they were going to be on the same release then i'm pretty sure that that would have been made evident and apparent during the dev stream so it's probably going to be something else what do you guys think it's going to be what do you think it should be what would you like to play as a game mode in Warframe with your Warframes. Personally, I'm not sure. There are a lot of different directions we can go. But in any case, don't forget to like and subscribe to all of my shitty channels. And of course, don't forget to fuck off.